Well, welcome to the introductory lecture for Introduction to Mineralogy. Minerals are essentially the building blocks and the foundation for most of our understanding in all the different geosciences. And so in this course, we're going to try to work from the ground up and explore about 90 of the different minerals that make up our planet. There's been about 5,500 minerals discovered throughout the decades. And of those, right, maybe 90, maybe 100, actually matter and be the focus of this class. The textbook that we're going to use for this class is called Manual to Mineral Science. And it's a great book that's been around for over 100 years in a variety of different editions. You can use this 23rd edition and track along with the different page numbers that I provide, or you can get one of the older versions and uh, fend for yourself on page numbers. For today's introductory lecture, it's actually only pages two and three of this textbook where we look at what is a mineral. And so for this lecture, what we need to, the only purpose is to define a mineral, to get on the same page to know what we're talking about. Of course, when I mention a mineral, these are the things that maybe come to your mind. Maybe you think about beautiful gemstones and sure enough, that is a mineral, it's aquamarine, that was cut from a crystal like this, which is an aquamarine crystal that a treasure hunter or um, miner has pulled from the ground. These are our touch point for minerals, but there's so many more out there. So let's just get started with this definition of, well, excuse me for that. So let's get started with the definition of mineral. I'll read it to you and I'll write it down here and we'll unpack it a bit. So the definition of a mineral is that it's a naturally occurring crystalline solid with a definite homogeneous chemical composition, usually formed by inorganic processes. So I'll write that down with you right here. It is a naturally occurring, and we're gonna write this down as a sentence, and then later we'll do a couple bullet points as we unpack it. So naturally occurring, crystalline solid. And since this is the first lecture in mineralogy, I do want to point out that you can watch these videos on 2x if you think this is going too slow on YouTube, and I recommend it. Now, if we're going too fast, you can always watch it on slow motion mode as well. All right, so a mineral is a naturally occurring crystalline solid with a definite homogeneous homogeneous chemical composition usually formed two wells by inorganic processes inorganic processes just get to know this definition if you're in my class I guarantee you this is on the exam sorry so here we are introduction to mineralogy there's our definition to a mineral and now let's unpack it there's five things here one two three four and five that are the, the points that we really need to unpack further so the first idea is that this is a naturally occurring material that's pretty simple basically it means that it is formed by natural processes it's not synthesized in a lab if you want to write that down here you can if it is synthesized in a lab and it satisfies all the other criteria well then we'd call it a synthetic mineral something like cubic zirconia is used in the jewelry industry it's not naturally occurring but it does satisfy all the others so that would be a synthetic mineral okay so naturally occurring means that it's not man-made it occurs in nature the second thing here to unpack oh well, let's actually go with solid since that's pretty obvious this is not a gas it's not a liquid so there are things like oil that occur in nature that are naturally occurring they have a chemical composition and i guess that's sort of organic but it's a liquid and so we wouldn't consider it a mineral number three is crystalline and this maybe is the first time we have something that has scientific meaning behind it. When I say crystalline, I mean that it has highly ordered internal structure. Let's write that down. Highly ordered internal structure. This is a structure of the atoms 
inside that make up a lattice. And we're going to spend a lot of the semester talking about how we can visualize these different atoms with a lattice structure as they build towards making a mineral. So here I'm just kind of drawing something to represent that internal structure. If it does not have a highly ordered internal structure, the, mater the material might be considered a mineraloid. Something like opal does not have a highly ordered internal structure, but it does satisfy the rest. Something else uh, would be glass, something like obsidian. This is amorphous, which means it doesn't have that crystalline structure, even though it does satisfy the other criteria. All right, the next part of our definition to get into, part number four, maybe this is a little longer to write down, but this is definite, oh boy, there goes my penmanship, definite homogeneous chemical composition. All right, the atoms that occur within this mineral are always and homogeneously the same. Now, there are there is some variability within certain limits, but let's just like put an example here. Um, quartz. This is a mineral we're going to talk about so much this semester. It is composed of silicon and oxygen. And the, they combine in such a way that always and forever, quartz is SiO2. Now within that variability, let's even put down here that we are we do allow some kind of small variance within certain certain spell that right, unlike curtain or whatever I wrote there, within certain limits. That means that quartz might have pure quartz as SiO2. But what if it was SiO2 with one part per million ppm? aluminum or titanium. Well, that would be a very small amount of natural variability that would be allowed, even though the material is still SiO2. Another example is going to be, let's do olivine. Olivine has something called solid solution. That doesn't have to mean too much to you now, but olivine is definitively and always MgFe Si2O4. But this magnesium and this iron can actually substitute for one another inside the lattice. And so you can have olivine with one end member that's all magnesium. You can have olivine with one end member that's all iron. And that's where the variability is allowed. So in this case, it's a definite homogeneous chemical composition. But with respect to this cation, it's not completely fixed. We do allow some variability there. Now, the last criterion, this is the end of today's probably the shortest lecture of the semester, it is this idea that minerals are inorganic. This used to be a major rule, and it is now the least important rule, and I don't even think we should include it. Well, we're going to include it in the definition, but we're going to always just put a little asterisk next to it that says, not really important. And there's a whole field in the geosciences called biomineralization. Biomineralization is an entire field where people study how organisms, uh, you know, like shells, get made of calcite. Plankton forms the same way. So shells made of calcite. This is a mineral made by an organism. We're doing it right now. Our teeth are, and the teeth in many animals, Teeth are made up of a mineral called apatite. So this would be an organic mineralization, but we include organic still in the definition because we have for 100 years. Well, I think that's it for this first lecture. Just a quick one to get started. And I look forward to seeing you next time as we start talking about crystals.